up, everyone? Today we're here with Paul Espiritu, who's a D1 at the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine. We're going to learn a little bit about his journey to dental school and his experience as a first year during COVID. Thanks for being here today, Paul. Anytime, Nick. I'm glad to be on the interview sessions with you guys, and uh, I think it's a great thing that you guys do. I remember watching all your videos when, when I was applying as a pre-dental. Uh, so yeah, thank you for giving me the chance. No, and it means a lot that you're taking time out of your day and you're, you know, you're paying it forward for the pre-dance out there and we really appreciate it. So can you give us a brief description of your undergraduate journey, like where you're from originally, where you went to school and like what your major was? Sure. Uh, so I was born in Queens, New York, uh, and I stayed there during my undergrad where I attended St. John's University. Mm-hmm. And uh, shortly after that, I, I took one gap year. And I, so I applied that uh, after 2019. And during that gap year, I did a lot of things to strengthen my application. Um, it gave me time during my senior year to take my DAT mm-hmm. and uh, apply that cycle after I graduated. Oh, and something I was wondering about, uh, when you took that DAT uh, the senior year of your you know, undergrad, did you feel like you were more prepared because you took more classes or could you have taken it earlier like as a sophomore as i think most pre do right right uh i think it all really builds on on itself and uh so i initially had begun studying you know towards the end of the summer during after my junior year uh and i think i did take classes which did help me i, I remember human physiology uh human physiology and anatomy i took my senior year which was helpful you know it reinforced a lot of the material that was on the exam mm-hmm. uh but overall i, I do think it, it's very possible to to do great on the on the biological science sections um without the assistance from classes because sometimes the, the classes do go a little more into depth than what's actually on the dat but you know reinforcement is is always great okay for sure and can you also tell us like why and when you chose dentistry uh yeah so when i so i joined the pre-dental club when i was a freshman actually and you know as you know growing up in high school um up to college i always knew i wanted to do something in the sciences and, um, you know, my, I, I really had it known until I, I joined the pre-dental club and I saw, you know, how dentistry really incorporates a lot of um, aspects from hand skills, from, you know, it's, it's very aesthetic and it has so many components to it that normally, you know, it's very different from a lot of the different health sciences from MD to, to farm to PA. And I really love the concentration in the oral cavity. And I think, um, I think that's why I really, you know, I, I, I found such an affinity and I, I did a lot, a lot of experiences um, through the pre-dental club that allowed me to, to really hone in on that, on that love for it. Awesome. And, you know, you're at UPenn, so I like, I, you had to have a strong DAT. What, what was your study method and how did you feel going through that like rigorous, you know, two, three month uh, study. Right, so uh, so I initially used uh, DAT Bootcamp and I supplemented that with the DAT Destroyer books. Mm-hmm. And um, so the D- DAT Bootcamp was great to go through all my content. And after I had gone through, you know, all the practice exams and, and everything that the, that the program offered, I, I supplemented all that with the DAT Destroyer books, which I, I do know there's a stigma against those books where some people may think it's a little bit of overkill. Um, I think if you have the time and you have enough, um, you have enough time before your test to practice, I, I think it's great to, to really reinforce all that material. And personally, I think it was great for me, especially uh, you know, at the time of my exam, you know, all that overkill that you experienced during the DAT destroyer books, it, it made the tests seem a lot more viable. You, you didn't, it was a lot of material that, uh, that made it somewhat of an easier experience in, in the sense that it wasn't as in depth as DAT destroyer was. Gotcha. And so when the DAT came around, did you ever see questions that you're like, oh, I haven't seen this before. I haven't studied this. Or did you feel pretty good going through it? 
Um, I think for the most part, you, you do recognize all the questions in some way or form. You know, there's always, a, you know, a word or two that, that'll really, you know, it'll, it'll surround one of the main topics. And I know there's a breakdown of all, all the section and every individual subtopic. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do feel when, when I did get to the test, you know, most of it, I, I could, you could either, e even if you didn't know it um, exactly, you knew that you knew a lot of the words that you could eliminate, or you just had a method to decipher the question. Gotcha. And I've heard that when you take the practice tests on DAT bootcamp, usually those scores are like one or two points lower than your actual DAT scores. Was that the same case for you? Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think I did shoot up a point or two in most sections, and yeah, in all sections. I, I think um, yeah, the the DT bootcamp um, destroyer definitely over prepares you in the sense that when you do get to the test, it's it's a lot easier to deal with um, questions that that aren't um, that you've dealt with before to to an even um, more difficult level. And do you still like remember that knowledge that you learned like or like do we still use that once we're in dental school? Um, definitely the biological sciences it all really builds on each other and you know when you start school again you go through the, all the beginning classes of, of immunology, biochemistry um, and now I'm taking human anatomy where you know all of it really has built on each other and we're just going to more depth um, in terms of you know, as when I remember learning, you know, musculature in, in undergrad, it was very broad. And now we're, we're learning every component. And uh, it's just, it, it, everything becomes more detailed in dental school, which is why, you know, taking those classes in undergrad and learning for the DAT are really essential to building a strong foundation for science. Gotcha. So can you talk to us a little bit about your interview day, you know, specifically at Penn, like, who spoke to you and how did you feel going through it? Right, uh, so the first time I interviewed at Penn was, was actually the second time I'd ever been at Penn Dental. Um, I had done a program uh, during my sophomore year of undergrad. Uh, it was called the Penn Asset Summer Academy. And it was a great experience um, where I, I was able to, to see everything the first year dental students did. And uh, it gave me, you know, really, it really made me fall in love with the school. So, so during the day of my interview, you know, I remember uh, having all these memories from, from meeting all these dental students and meeting a lot of faculty. And, you know, when I got there, you know, it brought back all these, all these memories that I was, that, it, that I had lived and it felt like, a, you know, a part of home. And so once I, so when we got into the room, uh, you know, all, all the interviews, you're always, you're always placed in a room with around Maybe like 10 to 15 students and uh, they do the, the normal rep repertoire of, of uh, meetings where someone comes in from finance, someone comes in from student life and usually have a couple people from admissions. Um, the director of admissions talked to us, um, Dr. Sheridan. And, uh, you know, I, I really did love her speech in particular. She, she talked about, you know, all the history behind Penn and how much uh, school has to offer and you know so much science was was created there and it's and it's crazy that it holds true today we're in the sense that you know and even the as a as a whole the university of pennsylvania two faculty here were the creators of the rna technology behind the vaccine and uh, moderna and pfizer so it's, it's great to see that your university as a whole is doing is doing really well and changing the world um and specifically i guess the interview process so it was one open and one closed. Mm -hmm. And my open was with Dr. Sheridan and my close with Dr. Nieves, who taught in the, who teaches in the periodontics department, as well as our virtual sim lab you experienced during your first year. Uh, and so it was great. I, I definitely feel like they, they asked me questions surrounding my, my, my experiences in life and they you know they really want to know what a whether you're in de in dentistry for the right reasons and you know what your affinity towards dentistry is so overall i think it was a great experience and i really did love the school okay so you you had a positive interview you felt relaxed and do you think it was one of the reasons you chose the school um, definitely. I always knew Penn was, was a great school. It was very competitive to get into. And it was, I was between Penn and a couple other schools. Um, 
And I think overall, you know, it did feel like a right fit for me uh, during the application cycle. And uh, yeah. So, did, and you did that, you know, as the event that Penn hosted, you know, beforehand, did you do any other pre-dental events or like network with any dental students or professors at Penn? Yeah, uh, so not specifically at Penn, but uh, I did also do pre-dental programs outside of St. John's. Um, so two of the biggest ones I did, which are great, which are great experiences, uh, was the Rutgers Gateway Program, as well as the Stony Brook Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. So at Rutgers, it was, it was very similar to, to the um, Penn Dental as the Summer Academy. Um, where, you know, they would bring you in, you would meet a lot of faculty, you would interact with all the first year dental students, and they would really take you it's and both of those experiences around uh, a week and a half to two weeks. And, you know, we you get to interact with faculty, you have, you have uh, sort of like many sessions of, of classes where they would teach you very, um, you know, basic sciences and basic dentistry that would really you know, introduce you to topics you'd learn in your first year of dental school. And so I think, you know, it was just a great time to network with faculty there. And, and it was it was really interesting that during my interview cycle, I recognized a lot of faculty that I interacted with years ago, you know, and, and they obviously knew I had been part of the program through my application. And it was great to, you know, reminisce and talk about, you know, how many things, how things have changed and how things are going now. And um, yeah, it was a great experience to, to network with with all of them. And do you think since you can put this on your, you know, applica dental application, right? So do you think this sways the decisions of dental schools, like when they see that you attend these pre-dental events? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say sway, but I, I do think that there is there is something that um, that brings value in knowing the program inside out. And it, it's hard to to really know a lot about the program simply from reading and you know um, networking with other students, but when you you know you lived day in and out um, through the school, you really could you really could say firmly that you really do love the program or you don't, and that'll really tell you if you're a great fit for the program, and that'll tell faculty that. And so if you're as in love with the school as as they were with you, then and it surely shows you're a right fit. Awesome. And um, something that I was wondering was what makes UPenn unique compared to all the dental schools out there? And like, why should someone consider applying to UPenn? Um, yeah, so I think uh, Penn brings a lot of, as I was saying before, you know, it's history and the sciences, you know, we're, um, they're very competitive and, and you know, we we do create a lot of science that, that really changes the world, but in terms of Penn specifically for me, I think they have a really strong curriculum. And at the end of your four years, they really strive to make you a really well-rounded healthcare practitioner. And as well as, you know, between many schools, I was, I was between when I applied and I think I had great opportunities, great residency matching. Um, Penn did really have a strong emphasis on technology, you know, their CAD CAM is, is really uh, top notch and aesthetically it's it's a very nice campus we are their main clinic is absolutely beautiful and i recommend everyone to to look up a picture and um and i do think at the end of the day um they really provided a a really good a good um curriculum to to really make you a whole a whole dentist awesome yeah you got me excited for <laughs> now too so how has your transition been from being a pre-dent to finally getting into down, being in dental school? And like, how has COVID affected that? Oh my gosh, it's been an absolute wild ride. Uh, yeah, we, you know, it was a lot of things were, were ambiguous in, in, throughout the whole year. Uh, so we were actually one of the only schools to stay completely open. Um, so before orientation, we were, or during orientation, we were assigned into, into four groups, uh, and they, they just rotated us in a quarterly basis. And that stayed true throughout the entire year where we would go in on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for didactics. And then on Wednesdays, the entire, our entire class would go in, but we would be divided between, um, our two, the two wings of our main clinic. Uh, we have an, another smaller clinic called Chills, and while 
and that's that's uh, part of our dental auxiliary unit class mm -hmm. where we shadow students for for on four hours and we would switch off with another with with our same class that would that would also be performing their sim lab at the same time so that was and that would be on wednesdays so that was our usual schedule okay. um and yeah just in general covid you know it did mess up a lot of things um so our orientation was a little weird as well mm -hmm. i think normally we would do a lot of uh i think we did a boat trip or i think in past prior years you know they would go on food tours or like a wine tour or something like that and it was just like overall there was a lot of bonding between upperclassmen between our own class and that's where we've made a lot of friends uh but obviously you know everybody was separated by these groups and your group is really the majority of the people you spend time with during your during our first year and those are the people i've gone to be uh the closest to um Okay, but so you still yeah. had some opportunity to get to know your classmates, right? Yeah, definitely. We all shared the the same struggles of going through all the, all the classes together. So, you know, uh, we all have like individual groups with our with uh, like a group me with our with our group, and you know that's where we we share information about the class, mm -hmm. um, like whether you know uh, like study guides and stuff. So I I feel like in in general this our class is very cooperative, and you know even for sub subdivided into our groups, there's there's a lot of um, unity in that. Okay, and what do you know any changes that Penn has made to their curriculum during this year? Yeah, so definitely we, so a couple of things, I think there was, um, I guess to start off with uh, our human, so during our first year, normally uh, we would have human cadavers integrated into our, our module that has to do with musculature, vasculature, and neuroanatomy. Um, but this year, unfortunately, it was, um, it was replaced by virtual dissection on an anatomosh table. So a lot less, you know, so we, we it, it's, it's a really nice table. And I think it, it does, it's a little bit expensive, but I think it still provided us great knowledge. Our professor uh, is really, really knowledgeable in, in human anatomy. So we did, we did the best we could with what we were provided. So I think hopefully next year, uh, we will be transitioning back into human cadavers for our second portion of our dissection lab. I see. Uh, and what about like sim lab or anything? Was that was that still normal? Right. So this year, so this wasn't particularly related to COVID, but in general, the changes that have been happening or happening over the few few years or the last three years with our new dean. Uh, this year, our sim lab was now graded, which did have its pros and cons. Um, I know if you were really strong in lab, then it really benefited you in the sense that it would now be in addition to your to your great overall GPA. Mm -hmm. And uh, but if but unfortunately, if you weren't the strongest in hand skills, then it, you probably would have to put in a few more hours in, in after our lab uh, to make sure you're up to up to skill with that. Uh, and yeah, just overall, our sim lab was reduced in the amount of content that we did mm -hmm. to some extent, because there were a lot of cancellations or a lot of changes with our, our curriculum where, you know, obviously we can't fit all the students that we would normally fit in our sim lab. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it, it really, the, the need for isolation between students, you know, provided, uh, it, it became a very like a uh, compact experience. Um, Let's see, we also did, you know, there were a few, we did a few less wax ups. Mm -hmm. uh, our virtual sim lab, um, there was, so virtual sim lab is, um, I think our school is like one of the only, one of the few schools that do it. And it's, uh, it's like virtual haptic technology where, you know, you're, you're with like two stylists and um, there's really nothing there. And we, we call it the preclinic to the preclinic mm -hmm. where, um, the school invested a lot of money into this and this is what we do before we go into sim lab and it's and it really feels uh very similar to, to what we would do in pre-clinic and it's all virtual and uh normally we would have practicals uh in this but i know due to time restrictions we we did not and um but yeah just overall a lot of the COVID has caused like our curriculum to be a little bit accelerated in that sense mm -hmm. But I do know this upcoming year, due to the changes, we are 
uh, having a new course being integrated into our curriculum, uh, a different op, a second operative course, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure our hand skills are are up to par with with other schools. Awesome. So they're still keeping you up to that, you know, same level of standard as they have for like previous years. Right. Okay. And uh, something I was wondering is that, you know, to get into Penn, it, it's competitive on its own. Do the dental students bring that competitive nature? And like, do, do you, you guys feel, do you feel like you guys can work together a lot or is it very, you know, independent studies? No, I definitely feel, uh, you know, one thing I will say, I, I think a lot of uh, my class would agree that they really did choose a very great, uh, great uh, selection of students. Mm -hmm. You know, so many students come from different walks of life. And I think every one of us has something to bring to the table. So I feel like that has, you know, influenced a lot of um, uh, collaboration between our classes. And I definitely know you know, being subdivided into our groups as well, you know, that our, our individual groups have become really close. And a lot of us, you know, worked, have worked together throughout our entire school year, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of projects that we do together for our health seminars. And, you know, we're grouped together. So we really we have gone the entire year together. And that has facilitated a lot of interaction and close collaboration with each other. Awesome. And so has your school given an update on what uh, it's going to look like in the fall like are you guys going back in person right so as of right now I, I do believe we will definitely go back in person uh, next year starting in our second year mm -hmm. uh, I do know that the school so in particular some of the programs that normally were purely virtual have now been transitioned into being in person Mm -hmm. uh one one in particular is our is our program very similar to the pen as a program that i was talking about earlier which is the pen summer academy uh, I, I believe it's called our, our pen oh no sorry i misspoke uh the intro to dentistry program that's oh. what it's called very cool yeah. so my final question for you is if you could go back in time and talk to your pre-dental self what would what tips would you give uh along the way for them to you know take to before they enter right. dental school yeah definitely um i think i probably have like two so one would be related to like you know just in general det studying um i think i've seen it uh, a lot of times between you know people you know even myself and like uh, a lot of friends that were studying for big exams that you really have to dedicate the time to those big exams and you have to treat it um like a nine to five you really you want to you want to do it once and you want to make sure that you really you're really dedicating all the things all the time that you need in the sense that a lot of us may may be balancing a million things whether it's shadowing um you know whether you're volunteering classes in general and there's life there's work and we really have to you really have to be good at time management and delegating your priority to to, to excelling your in your um, in your exam because you know it's a very it's very uh, it's very disheartening when you you do dedicate all that time and then you it doesn't come out with the results that you want so I think it's better to, to fully dedicate everything you have and as much time as you can with, within reason and doing as as great as you can on the test and my second would be in terms of you know when you're applying and all that that you know really be really put put faith in in your application and know um know that if you hit all the essential key points and providing a full application that you will receive interviews and when once you do get to these interviews what faculty what admissions really want to know is that whether you're a good person and whether you're right fit for the field they want to know how you think they want to know if you're able to articulate your feelings in a, in a well in a good manner uh, so I think, you know, a lot of these things come with time and it's, um, and it's growth. So I think if you have all those key elements within your overall application that you can really do, really do well. All right. Thank you for those words of wisdom. And thank you for, you know, again, taking the time out of your day to do this. We really appreciate it here at Future DDS. You know, if any of our viewers have any additional questions for you, can they reach out to you either through like email or social media? 
Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, my Instagram handle is paulespiritu.dental and my Facebook is paulespiritu. So if anybody has any questions, they could always message me on those. Awesome. And I'll include all that in the you know description of this video, like as always. So everyone at home, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when we upload new content. If you have any questions for us at Future DDS, you can always DM us on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll try to reply as soon as possible. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you for having me, Nick. Of course.